Hello, welcome to the Antimicrobial Resistance Awareness video series. This is a series of six videos that aims to educate the general public, especially the youth, on antimicrobial resistance. We have simplified the information so that it is understandable to anyone. You just need to know a little English and a little science. Welcome on board. Explaining the mechanisms of resistance. As we start off this video, we would like to offer a quick pointer. It is good to note that antimicrobial resistance, abbreviated as AMR, is a natural phenomenon that occurs due to genetic changes in the microbes. Remember the theory on evolution and natural selection? Yeah, that's it. Survival for the fittest. Bacteria, just like other organisms, constantly undergo genetic mutations to ensure survival of a species. Their predators in this case are the antibiotics. However, the increased resistance has been precipitated by our irrational use of antibacterials. This has provided the bacteria with insights, enabling them to develop resistance at a very high rate. How does this resistance actually occur? How do these bacteria actually counter the effects of antibiotics? To understand this, it will be good if we start off by first understanding the basic structure of a bacteria. So, here is our bacteria. We have a long tail called the flagellum. We have a few penetrations called the pili. The outermost layer is called the capsule. Beneath it, we have a cell wall. Under the cell wall, we have a plasma membrane and some constituents enclosed within the membrane, such as the ribosomes, chromosomes, plasmid DNA, and cytoplasm. The first mechanism of resistance is reduced uptake of the drug. In this phenomenon, the bacteria changes its structure such that the drug is not able to penetrate its cell wall. This implies that the drug will not act on the intended site, hence the bacteria will survive. The second mechanism involves modification of the drug target site. Let's say that drug A was supposed to bind to a certain component of the chromosome. To do this, the drug has to identify this component. However, if this component structure is changed, it means that the drug will not bind and will not act. Just like that, the bacteria will live to see another day. The third mechanism that some bacteria have developed is that they actually attack the drug themselves. In attacking, we mean that the bacteria changes the structure of the drug. When the structure is changed, the drug can no longer work. The last mechanism we shall talk about is active efflux of the drug. Efflux means removing. Bacteria have become so clever of late. When the drug has just penetrated its cell wall, it is kicked out very fast. This prevents it from destroying the bacteria. As we finish off on the mechanisms, it is important that we understand that some bacteria may use two or more mechanisms to protect themselves from the effects of antibiotics. Actually, the mechanisms we have talked about for bacteria are the same ones used by other microbes and their respective antimicrobials. Hmm, it seems that these bacteria are very smart. Next, let's see how these bacteria are able to transmit this resistance to others. This is what makes the resistance phenomenon a deadly challenge. Resistance is caused by a mutation of genes. These genes can be transmitted to other bacteria via two methods, vertical gene transfer and horizontal gene transfer. In vertical gene transfer, the bacteria transmits this gene to its offspring. Bacteria multiply by dividing. This division happens very fast in some of them. If the parent bacteria has the resistant gene, it can give rise to so many bacteria with the resistant genes. In horizontal gene transfer, the bacteria with the resistant gene transfers this gene to its neighbors. Remember the plasmid DNA we saw in the previous diagram? Well, these plasmid DNAs can be transmitted from one bacteria to another, thus spreading the resistant genes. What makes this phenomenon dangerous is a concept called positive selection. After taking antibiotics, the antibiotics destroy the bacteria that do not harbor the resistance mechanisms. These bacteria are regarded as sensitive. This leaves you with only resistant bacteria that may be only a few at the moment. However, if left alone with less competition on their growth mediators such as nutrition, these bacteria multiply rapidly. 
At the end of it all, so many resistant bacteria are present. This concept applies for other microbes too. It is our hope that you understand the basic mechanisms on how resistance occurs. You see, it's not as hard as it seems. You only need to know some science basics. In the next video, we will look at how the factors or drivers have resulted in a rise in antimicrobial resistance. In the meantime, we have one request. Please help us in sharing this video with your friends. Join us in passing this information across so that we can outsmart this clever bacteria.